Hello, beautiful weather in the UK at the moment, having the most amazing time. Love, love, love this energy of building up to the summer solstice. And today's video is about the next 20 day cycle of red dragons, yellow sun. Yesterday we had yellow spectral sun so we were on a journey of what is seeking release. So we were here yesterday and on number 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, white dog, the center, what it's all about on one level is healing the ancestral stories. So really becoming aware of the ancestral stories now on planet Earth in this red Earth 52 day process. So at the moment we're in refinement and yesterday we had reached what is seeking release in the shadow story. That's my perception of it. And, um, so yeah, what were you up to yesterday? Because this is really key. And then just following that back up to the top. So the one that we've just completed is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've gone through the gateway. So over the last 20 days, see where you've gone through a gateway of your survival issues, what's been happening for you. Just want to say a big shout out thank you i've gone over the 100 youtube subscribers yay um blessings to you all you people who've subscribed and who watch this channel because you're a rare breed this channel these videos this content is not for the masses so it's intriguing and interesting to see how the numbers are growing now and where will this go because people who come here usually have a very distinct reason for doing that following the Mayan cosmology. So if you are magnetically drawn here, then there's always a good reason for it. So exciting times. And going through that gateway has been a bit of a rocky road last week, very much up and down energy as we were in the last degrees of Mars in Cancer as well. So it's really bringing to light at the 29th degree, which is when you add that together, that's number 11. So release, what's seeking release. And we're in a big, big re release 260 day cycle. The next one's coming up on the 1st of September. It's going to be in Virgo. So once anything goes into Virgo, this is embodiment again around reality check, around seeing where we are in connection to the sacred feminine and where we can make a shift in our conditioned mind set. That's the crucial thing at the moment. Change the mindset change the thoughts, change the beliefs, change the story. The 260 day cycle we are in is all about Sagittarius energy, Akashic record, creating new stars in our constellation as in within. So it's a very exciting time for doing that. And at the same time, it can feel emotionally challenging because we're seeing how we're attached to old stories and we've got an emotional attachment. And whenever we've got an emotional trigger, remember it's always about old story, always, because that's how our, how our amygdala works. Can't get my words out today again. That's how our amygdala works. It's what it's there for. It's to help us to survive and it alerts us to danger because of what we've experienced before. So it's allowed our ancestral tribes to survive a very long time, thousands of years, where in the beginning, when we were just learning about what was dangerous, uh, you know, what was lethal to human beings as conscious creators in the early stages, 
if you think about that then we had to do lots of resets, lots of people coming and going very quickly because we didn't have that wiring in the amygdala. So if you think about where we are today and how long it's taken us to get here and then start to really understand the biology and the psychology, this really helps understand the bigger picture of how we've learned how to survive. And that's great. All of that is really good. And if we want to go to the next level, then we have to let go of some of these survival ways of being because they're not allowing us to come into higher states of consciousness. Lower vibrational survival base chakra issues are key to this cycle of red earth. Red earth is, the planet is Uranus, it's a mastery code of 17. It's how well rooted are we? How is our root chakra performing? Um, is it doing its job in a healthy way or are we still stuck in old stories, our ancestral line, our old narrative that is seeking release now? And of course, this particular 52 day process is in yellow. So we're now seeing the manifestation, the flowering and understanding what is actually real and true in terms of where we are. Doesn't mean it's real and true in terms of truth. This is paradoxical and complicated and sometimes confusing. And it takes a while to start to rewire these old belief systems because they're so deeply embedded. So for example, when I start working with people many years ago as well, uh, not so much now um, because I'm working with different groups of women now, mature women. But when I first started out um, 13 years ago, it was uh, often a case of when you're introducing concepts around healing, that in the beginning, people didn't recognize that they were running a survival program code around parents, for example, family. We're wired to protect our tribe at all costs in a way. And so this tribal mindset that is running now, you can see there's lots of distortions going on there around that patterning. In order to heal, we have to learn how to strip away these layers and start to release these coping mechanisms because we have to go into uncomfortable areas. So we have to become comfortable with the uncomfortable around how we've been treated by family members, for example, by friends. And so we have to dismantle this firewall, if you like to use a computer analogy. And to begin with, many people will be extremely loyal to their parents. And again, it's not about criticizing the parents. It's not about blaming. But again, that often that program, that childlike program is running to begin with around not taking personal responsibility, radical responsibility for everything that's going on in our life and often not being able to look at stories around parents or friends, siblings um, and feeling very protective around that. So again, it's just understanding that we go through lots of different layers on this journey and all of these are essential for our evolution, for our emotional evolution in particular now, because we're really understanding how the amygdala works and how it creates the holograph using this framework, this Mayan framework, and how that has to change within us so that we can change. Rewiring the amygdala is key. It's why EFT, I believe in my experience, is essential using it in this way to shift the old story because just having an intellectual shift doesn't cut it. So I hope that makes sense and check EFT out if you haven't done that yet. 
So we're now going into the tenth today, which is Red Crystal Dragon. And I have a couple of friends and clients who are Red Crystal Dragons. So happy Mayan day to you if you watch this. Been very, very formative in my life, dragon energy people around learning about this particular dynamic, which of course is the initiator. Number one, my sign, red dragon. And it's only in the past, I don't know, probably a couple of years that I've really come into working with the 20 codes. Uh, I'm on my 10th year of using this experientially every day. So it is very complex. And the most important thing is for you, if you're drawn to this, is for you to start working with this, okay? Because this helps take us into natural cycles again, into natural truth, into natural dynamics, rather than being stuck on a number 12. So today's number 12. So that sort of tunes into that. What are our survival issues? What is coming up for us right now around that? And remember with all of this, whenever you're experiencing this, this is the gateway point for you to get clear, getting some clarity, becoming crystal clear. This is the complex stability number, number 12. Every day 12, we go into this state of being so we can see what our light body is like, what it's attracting literally every day. And is that in alignment with truth? Is that in alignment with balance, being balanced in the masculine and feminine, letting go of codependent frameworks? So anything that we use to take the edge off, edge off take, change our mood, anything that stops us feeling what we're really feeling, that's what needs to go if it's unhealthy, if it's a mood shifter, if it's an avoidance. The sooner that we can go straight to truth, even though it might feel uncomfortable, or I don't want to look at this issue, uh, maybe it's around finances. I know that's coming up for a lot of people at the moment. Um, but the sooner you go there, the sooner you open the bill, the sooner you face the music. This is so key to the 12 step programs around letting go of codependency, like alcohol, for example. All of these codependency things are simply ways of masking what's going on on a deeper level. All of these addictions are not about the actual thing. They're not about the alcohol, they're not about the heroin, they're not about the sugar. They're about the part of us that's trying to avoid the uncomfortable feelings. Now, if you start to use a tool like emotional freedom technique, it will help you be with your feelings and start to come into balance with that. So often we have pushed our feelings down, we have, in order to survive, we have avoided telling somebody a truth, for example, ending a relationship, in a friendship, romance, job, because of how that's gonna make us feel. So it might make us feel guilty, it might make us feel sad, um, we might not want to let go of that relationship because we love that person, but we know it's not good for us because it, you know, we keep going round and round and around the same issue. So really important now is to surround yourself with people who are ready to do the repatterning. They're ready to do the healing. They're ready to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. They're ready to start to learn tools such as tapping, which will help them take the edge off by going into the edge and seeing where the edge is because it's the edge of the comfort zone. That's all it is. It's where the new growth is. It's where the new journey begins. And that's what the solar eclipse and the new moon in Gemini is all about. That energy is what is coming to a close for you if you allow it and if you choose to do the work and you choose to start doing something new. And 
the seeds of that old story, they're there in your triggers. They're there, the, the problem is the solution, in other words. So, so just becoming very aware of that. So Mars went into Leo in the UK on Friday. And so really powerful energy coming in now, which can be ego, it can be anger, it can be that drama queen Leo energy. It can be the part of us, the child, that is still not evolved yet. So some people call that a victim story. And I prefer to say it's the inner child that's ready to learn and evolve and come into maturity, which again is what this process is about, is what this time is about now, is how do I grow up and start to face all the issues around me being a well-rounded, healthy adult being on all levels who's taking responsibility for their journey throughout life and not trying to make other people responsible, not trying to hide away from it, uh, difficult decisions, lots of difficult decisions going on right now. So this is this Gemini shining little light, shining the, the hot spots on where we have growth. And so where does this one go? Well, it's going from the crystal today, and that's right down the bottom. So it's a number 10. So we're in the manifestation stage of where we are with Red Dragon. Um, running down there to always follows on. So if you think the last one was Red Overtone Dragon, we've now, it, goes down to yellow overtone sun. So mastery of this process, that's what this is about. Mastery of working with the triggers, working with the shadow story, what we want to create, what we want to manifest on planet Earth through us as a human being. And that's got to be the key focus for everybody. Now, in this yellow castle, which is led by Red Earth, we are really seeing what's coming to light about planet Earth, and we're really starting to see that in particular for us. So we've got Red Earth, which is the 17th Mayan sign, so it's a mastery sign. And when you add those numbers together, you get number eight, so this is about integration. We then have White Dog, which is integration that's the key for white dog and the planet is mercury so we've got mercury retrograde in gemini right now and we're going over old ground that's going to come to an end soon and so we're really sort of coming up to the spiral of wrapping that up and really coming into how we want to communicate how we want to relate what are our relationships showing us right now and really going over that story so that when we get this is going to be crucial for tomorrow because uh, there's a big event which i'll come to in a minute if you don't already know i think most people know about the big event coming up so then we go into the next one, which is Blue Night, which is coming up on Tuesday, so the day after the big event. And um, as you can see there, we've also got a portal on the day after that, which is Yellow Lunar Seed. And so then Blue Night we go into, and we're going to be focusing on being a conscious dreamer. So literally seeing what's coming up for us as we're going towards the summer solstice. And this is the goddess energy that's coming in now really powerfully. So we're coming to, again, the last of the masculine Aries, the warrior that has set off at the spring equinox and is finally 
reaching the land of the goddess. So Jason and the Argonauts, he's got there to the land of the Golden Fleece at last, uh, with a little help from a key sorceress. So again, if you check out that story, I'm not going to go into that, it takes too long, but check out Jason and the Argonauts and who he meets. And if you're aware of astrology, you can go even deeper on that as well with Circe and you can check that out where she is in your chart because she's also very key to this journey of finding the golden fleece of healing, new beginnings. So lots of things coming up. So let's go back to, before we go to the big event tomorrow, uh, what are the cards today for the next 20 days? What have you been doing today? Because remember, what you do every day leads to your future. It leads to what you're going to be doing tomorrow. I don't know if this happens to you, and I've not asked anybody else so far, but if you'd like to comment on the thread underneath, please do. What I find is, just on simple things, if I get up early, so for example, I went to an amazing garden show yesterday and got up early, then it tends to follow that the day after I will be getting up early as well. And that might con continue for several days. So I haven't mapped that in the Mayan actually, and I might start to do that as well. Um, because this is fascinating, uncovering patterns, but you can see your dynamic working as a conscious creator there. And the more that you become mindful about this, the more that you start to think, hmm, shall I choose a high vibe Thing to do today, my diet, um, stay in truth pattern, not do anything codependent around food or taking the edge off or, or shall I go back into an old habit that's going to drop my vibration? All of that is good, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, it's good in terms of just your being authentic with what you want to do. Then, as you start to notice how it makes you feel when you, well, I want to say give in, because I think quite often for me personally, it's a give in thing. It's like, oh, go on then, I'm just going to have that cake or, you know, this is what I normally do when I go to an English country garden. You know, I have scones and um, tea and, um, but I didn't do it yesterday so I stayed really focused on some things I did give in to temptation like buying plants for example um, which I find very hard to resist and um, so again it's just noticing how each day you're creating your future literally and the more that you can be doing of the high vibe what's good for you what's healthy what brings you joy then of course that's going to perpetuate, isn't it? So don't you love being around joyful people, genuine joyful people? I mean, people who are full of light and love life and they're doing what they want to do and they're on track, they're on alignment in terms of their soul journey. This is crucial. So spider woman connection. So we're all linked, the web is there. So it's always remembering that when we might feel a bit lost, a bit lonely, or we're just going through a phase and, you know, just really feeling that, what, what thoughts are creating that? Where did they come from? Tapping on that, tapping just is so amazing. It shifts you. We have got rhythm and that is about electric. It's about day three, it's about alchemy. It's about finding that special source. I've heard that a couple of synchronicities over the past couple of days. The secret source of the alchemist is finding the formula that works, finding the formula that brings magic, joy, peace, and it's there to be found. And number four, the four of discs, power. So again, that's a mandala. And if you look at that closely, I was in a castle yesterday, Powderham Castle. And yeah, just tuning into that energy, 800 year old castle. And how 
sitting in that space of these amazing ancient oak trees and watching the deer, looking at all the gorgeous plants, people enjoying themselves. Plants are just so amazing in terms of everything that they can create for us for healing, just by looking at them, talking to them, tuning into them, their vibration, being sheltered by them, putting them in our bodies in a healthy way. So there are lots of different herbs there that you could buy as well. And I'm passionate about that. Uh, I would say I'm a hedge witch, so always love gardening and um, I learned that from my Leo grandfather as well. So pottering around, tuning in, having tea ceremonies, for example, I haven't done that for ages actually, have to do that at some point. So yeah, just really this, these cancerian things of the home as well. I'm just going to read you the moon degree right now. When we start to feel sad, often people resist it, you know, and that's, that's um, really missing a lot of key information about how we need to make changes in our life. We really got to go there to know that. And cancer energy, the goddess energy, the, the summer solstice, that energy is so sensitive, so emotional. And I know lots of Cancerian people. I've had Cancerian people in my childhood and just observing them and their behaviors and whether they own that sensitivity. And not many people do. They develop hard shells in order to not go there. Pastry makers, Cancer 26 degrees, a world perfectly fit for public consumption. A ceremonial display and production of community goodies, commodities, marvels and wonders. You're in touch with the marketplace and with special occasions. Most at home within a gourmet sensibility, a good life ambience, but able to turn just about anything into the best of cycles. Coolly self-packaging, fascinated by images, ideas, culture and belonging to a circle of special friends, laying it on strong, creating the social glue, the magical rapport, convinced above all that we deserve the best, we are special, we are what it is all about. And that is it, isn't it? You know, that we are the ones that we're here for at this time. That, and we've been so diverted from that mission because the the imbalance model, the codependent model, is very much based on people not having that focus and that purpose. Uh, focusing on other people, how to serve them all the time. And we can't really serve other people until we learn how to serve ourselves. Otherwise we're giving our energy away all the time and often it's a coping mechanism around trying to control others, trying to be good um, without actually feeling good about ourselves. So that's, that's a real pivotal shift to make at this Chiron in Aries time. The Four of Discs is about owning personal energy, physical potency and vitality the very act of which precedes change. There may be a feeling of holding on tightly to what one has emotionally or physically. The ability to do work is unfettered and the engineer is active. The querent is taking solid steps towards creating material security in the physical world. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So it's important to take risks it's important to see what has worked. This is the eye of the storm, being, being able to be in the eye of the storm. And of course, the more that we can manage our emotional state, the more all of these other things around stability come into being. So we're learning how to 
get in balance with the material. This is again with Uranus and Taurus at the moment. And now more about the big event tomorrow. So the big event tomorrow is taking place at the end of this white dog wave spell. So this 20 day cycle again is around how do we learn from red earth? What, what have we awakened to about where we are on planet earth, how we live, what's been coming to light since the start of this 260 day cycle. And of course, further back than that, but in particular, if you use this cycle, this is really key. Then, how are we still running our ancestral patterns and how have we been refining, how have we becoming being becoming aware of them. So for example, I'm working with a 52 day process and I'm working with other people with their 52 day process. And we've all got some common ground there in some way. And um, because we've got similar patterns, we've got similar cycles, because that's how it works. And so as we become more aware of how we're living something now, we might know that it feels out of alignment, it feels painful, it feels something that we've been doing over and over, but we don't quite know how to stop doing it. Uh, maybe we're feeling stuck around that, we're still running mindsets around that. And then as we start to become really focused on what it is, because this is what this 260 day tool is for, to become aware of where we're in alignment and where we're not in alignment with truth. So where we're healing, evolving, changing, and things are coming into fruition in a way that feels really joyful, and where we're not doing that, that's where we need to be really focusing on shifting that health story. So in White Cosmic Wind tomorrow, we have got the shift around Am I able to listen to my spirit? Do I make time for it? Do I tune into it? Again, white wind is the second Mayan sign. It's a new learning coming in. It's twinned with red earth. It's part of the same tribe. And so it's what's coming to light. What is Uranus bringing us on the planet? It's in Taurus. So what do we value? What do we love? How do we value ourselves? That's the most important thing. So tomorrow what is happening is we've got the second Saturn square with Uranus and they're both at 13 degrees. So this is the goddess energy again. This is the shift energy that is coming in. So I'm going to read you the degrees of these. because That's what I intuitively felt to do. So tomorrow, who knows what's going to happen, but it seems to be quite a dynamic energy. Lots going on on the world stage at the moment. And um, I know a lot of people that I know are finding it very challenging with a lot of the deception that's going on at the moment around truth, manipulation, use using people's fear, of course. And of course, people have to change their fear so that they're not manipulated. But a lot of people aren't aware of that right now, of how that works. And watching innocence being corrupted on that stage is hard to watch. Taurus 13, a treatise on imaginary creatures pretending to be caught up in the game, playing out the image. Everything becomes contrived and spins out ever further. You have an appetite for self-confounding, music, musing upon what it might be like, stepping back from one thing to think about another thing, leading to irony and reliance upon wit, standing away from the world, caught in a byway of the personal self and wandering aimlessly but purposefully. The ultimate intent is to see this one through, to take it on and play it out and be through with it. 
but meanwhile it is beguiling and ensnaring to live so far inside with so little real outlet and such a load of concepts and memories and desires to carry around everywhere you go as though this were what indiv individuality means. So pretending to be caught up in the game. That's a really strong image for me right now around the bullshit, which for me, that's what Taurus is. It's not doing the bullshit anymore. It is what it is. You know, it's being practical, being grounded, and not being sidetracked by these Neptunian delusions and illusions. Neptune being linked in to the sword of truth, white mirror, which was the energy of the new moon and the solar eclipse. And it's also red dragon. So red dragon is showing us our illusions and delusions and things that we like to hold on to, things that we like doing that we know aren't good for us, but maybe make life tolerable because we haven't decided to break out of that cocoon and do something that is about real life. It's about our wildness. It's about not being a domesticated rabbit in a hutch, aka watership down. So each person to their own in this life and at the same time there are truths around what happens when you go down a particular pathway to Alice in Wonderland. Saturn in Aquarius at 13 degrees. So these two are meeting head on. A lidless granite sarcophagus, it is empty. There's nothing to go back to. The past has become a phantom. You are propelled forward into the great unknown, but it's so easy to become somewhat desperate and out of context. So much depends upon how you interpret the fact that you are strictly on your own without a personal history or heritage to fall back upon. Is this real opportunity or a strange fate? It's very hard to tell the difference as it all becomes ambiguous, paradoxical, very mixed. Where do you go from here? No easy answers anywhere. Perhaps the only thing to do is to acknowledge and move with this radical opening and to put no interpretations on it, assuming nothing at all. For if you can welcome multi-dimensionality with truly open arms, it might well turn out that the future was never supposed to be like the past and that becoming so free does provide an open access channel for what needs to happen to come through a jump ahead of the last moment synchronised with evolution beautifully. I love reading the, the degrees because each time they give me a bigger picture perspective and that's so key to um, Gemini and Mercury and the messenger of the gods, isn't it? It's being able to step out of that personality that we're playing and remember what we came here for at this time and to really go into that fear that's coming up around survival story, around massive things happening on planet earth right now and trusting that they do need to happen so that we can go somewhere else. So I think this particular square is happening in the UK round about nine o'clock tomorrow night and so just to be aware of that energy and also that we've got Mercury retrograde and we've got the north node in Mercury and Gemini as well at at 10 degrees. So again, where all of these are in your chart, we'll shed some light. If you want to know more about this and you're a woman, I have women groups every new moon. I just had the last one and it was really powerful. So these new moon groups that I do, they do focus on the astrology. If you want to focus on the astrology, we also focus very much on transformation work, which is tapping, and that's my passion. So check my website out, flowwithjoe.com, and have a look at the new moon circle, if it calls to you. 
the more that we work in groups of women, the more we build that energy and synergy and magic really does happen because we always show each other different aspects. So tomorrow, what could you focus on? Well, what you could focus on is what needs to shift for you that's come to light over the last 13 days around conditional love how you are conditional about love, how you're conditional about loving yourself, about respecting yourself. Mercury retrograde comes to an end on, I have to check that out for the time, and I'm still not exactly sure for the UK time, but it's the 22nd, 23rd, and it's at 16 degrees, so, um, Again, where that is, is really key. Once um, the retrograde finishes, um, 16 degrees, again, in terms of adding those numbers together, that's number seven, which is shaping our destiny, blue hand, Mayan sign. And in terms of, if you leave it at 16, it's the heart warrior, and we're going into the warrior wave spell as well after blue night. So I love how all these link in together. So we have uh, Black Moon Lilith as well and Pluto are both at the same degree of 26 degrees. Add those two together, that's number eight, integrate. So again, the more that we face our fears, feel our fear, start tapping on where is this coming from, this fear? Because it can and often is simply a projection of past history in this particular lifetime, as well as a culmination of all other lifetimes. Because remember, whatever we're doing in this lifetime, is a culmination of everything that's gone before. So don't get too hung up on past lives as you need to have that information in order to move forward. If you don't, it's great information, it's extra information. And there's lots of ways where you can find this out, uh, especially with the North Node, South Node, and where that is in your chart, that gives crucial information. Also looking at past cycles in astrology when we're having these same patterns. So remember on one level, it, it is all about the pattern. Blue night, the planet for blue night is Saturn. So knowing your Saturn code and the patterns that you've been creating in life and how you've been evolving your ancestral story, who in particular, so for me, it's my grandmother on my mum's side. I really know that now, and that's really helpful. The more you start to really map your code and do your family constellation, that will help enormously around getting clarity about things so you can understand and you can go deeper. And of course, people do need to understand things in order to make sense of them. Again, that's what Gemini is really about. This is fundamental to deep, healing, caring, empathetic people is this is foundational stuff. You know, this is the power stuff. This is the four of discs as well. It's really understanding what makes us tick, why we tick in a certain way. And if we don't resonate with a health vibration, if we are not in touch with Mother Earth, if we're not being earthed and grounded, finding ways to do that, finding ways to heal, finding ways to rewire our reality and be empowered in doing it, that is essential to women, especially who I'm working with at that time, because the sacred feminine energy has been so out of balance for such a long time. And I believe that's key for our evolution. It's key that we had to go down that road in order to understand it, 
in order to navigate it, in order to understand all the pitfalls and the pathways and what creates what and how to understand alchemy, how to understand what ingredients you need there to make the secret sauce and to really fundamentally work with yellow human, the philosopher's stone, how to be a healthy human being on all levels, mind, body and spirit. So I hope you have an amazing 20 day cycle. The next 52 day cycle starts on the 11th of July. If you're a woman and you'd like to take part in that and really start to go deeper with understanding your personal process, if you're ready to understand your karma in order to do your dharma, so understand how to do the work, how to change your destiny by learning how to shape it and have fun doing it as well. So really start to align with this amazing magical time and set your heart on fire with this Mars in Leo this time can be truly amazing for us to heal our hearts, to raise our vibration, to feel uplifted, to know that it is possible for us to create our heart's desire. Now it's why we're here. And um, please do get in touch for more information and come and join this circle of light that we are creating very powerfully now to birth a new earth. Lots of love, hope you have an amazing day with hopefully sunshine wherever you are. See you soon, bye for now.